Okay, what I have here is a water choke for a 150C carburetor. Belongs to a 1979 Triumph Spitfire. This is a spare carburetor that I had. Um, and I, so I have two sets of water chokes. So I kind of pieced together a couple of things, um, parts that I needed so I didn't have to order them, or things that were really hard to find, like this little pin right here. It was extremely difficult because when I pulled it out, of one was stuck in there so bad that it damaged it on the way out. So I managed to pick one up off the internet pretty cheap, along with this carburetor and a manifold, all for 150 bucks. So I got pretty lucky. So anyway, the uh, what I did is I took this whole thing apart. I'm going to put it back together. All you do is just do it in reverse. It's really simple. The trick is making sure you clean out everything really, really, really well. I went ahead and I pulled this plug because these holes that are right here on the side that go inside this plug were not showing through these holes here like they show uh, in the manual. They were actually hidden, so you couldn't even see them. So when I, I pulled it out so I can have those holes there and there. Uh, plus it was pretty dingy and corroded and all that good stuff so I'm going to clean it up. So the trick here is I've cleaned it all up and let me get some 3 in 1 oil. I've blown it out. I've bunch of brake cleaner so it should be ready to go so I'm gonna start with this plug that I took out first to make sure I line up the holes with the back side and, um, the only thing really holding this thing in here are these is this rubber washer and this rubber washer so when I when I took it out I need to show you that when I took this thing out, uh, obviously it's sitting in there like this, you know, with, um, and you can see this brass part come up through the top. Well, since it is brass, you don't want to damage it at all. So what I did is I took a, if I can find it here, I took a drill bit and I took a washer. All right, and I put that washer right on top of that brass fitting. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so then I took that drill bit down through the top here at the top hole and I put it on top of that washer to protect that brass bit because um, you don't want to damage it. Otherwise, that needle that goes in there won't slide in and out um, nice and smoothly. Um, so I, I did it just like that. And then I took a hammer and I tapped on the top of this. Now, when I say I tapped, I literally tapped and it came out nice and gently. You don't have to hammer the crap out of it. If you do, once again, you mess up that brass. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in the reverse way. And uh, I'm going to tap from this side. Just make sure I have my holes lined up first. I'm going to make them flat here. Hopefully, yeah. Just need to line up. They don't have to line up perfectly but they do need to line up. So there's actual slots on in here that'll keep this thing from going too far. So once you hit the bottom, you're done. I'm going to use a screwdriver and tap this in here. I'm 
think I'm almost there. It doesn't take much. Probably should get a shorter screwdriver. Okay. So we're in there. There's also a little ridge right here where the brass comes up to it. It nestles up right behind it so you can't go any further as well. So it lets me know I'm in the right spot. Let me see it that way. Okay. Well, another thing that I did is um, obviously you've seen some other videos online is I went to, when I took this off, the first thing I did was I, I checked the back of this to see if it was concave, which means that if you're holding it flat, it goes like this on the back side of this thing. All right, sure enough, when I had, um, uh, you know, took some sandpaper, I took some 400 grit sandpaper just to test it, just lightly, and I laid it flat on the table, and then I rubbed it. And when I did, I, I only thing that was coming clean is around the edges. So it took me, you know, it didn't take long, 10, 15 minutes. And I did it in different directions, but um, just a flat surface and some, and some sandpaper. Um, I did use 120 grit to start. Um, that helped get all that aluminum nice and flat. And then I used a 400 grit just to make sure that it was a little bit smooth and there wasn't any grooves in it. So now it should set really flush right against the carburetor right here okay so I shouldn't have that concave problem um, and you know we talk I, I see tons and tons of stuff on the internet about my engines running rich well that's exactly what was problem with my car it was running so rich that I couldn't even I can't even come close to getting it to stop using a lot of gas I mean even though it's running and driving it it just it, I couldn't get it to go any less and so this was um, the thing that I'm gonna hopefully will solve my problem so now that I have this in here now I'm going to uh, I clean this piece up here this has the spring on it uh, which is here somewhere there it is the spring goes here and it goes in this shaft on this other side okay so what I'm going to do put just a little bit of oil on it you know just because it's got a um, slide up and down in that shaft so I put just a little bit of three-in-one oil because I clean the inside of this thing out with brake cleaner and so I want to make sure everything uh, has just a little bit of of lubricant on it so that we don't have a, an issue but this spring goes right down in there like this and this goes right into that opening right through here hopefully you can see that with that flat piece sitting up and as you can tell nice and smooth. So I'm going to hold this side with my thumb so it doesn't shoot across the garage. And then I have my end piece. Now I already have my washer on there. Or not my washer, but my gasket. So, which is good. And I'm going to put that right on the end. I'm going to continue to hold that down. And I'm going to insert my screws here. I don't know how I keep losing my tools. Put this in here so that end doesn't pop off on me. And my Phillips screwdriver's got to be right here somewhere. It's blending in with the table. Oh, there it is. It's underneath the rag. Sorry about that. So I'm going to tighten this down. It 
you don't want to go too crazy because this whole thing is made from aluminum it's very soft you want to get it to be nice and snug because you don't want uh, there to be any leakage of any kind okay so as you can tell this shaft works really well nice and smooth now All right. the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pin in there now I'd already replaced this little bitty o-ring on there um, just a couple of months back when I put the engine back together on a rebuild so that one is actually in really good shape and just for giggles well I better not do that Hold on. I'm going to put just a little bit of just a tad bit of 3-in-1 on along there slide it down in here like that and that way that shaft goes in there so this rides down inside that tube nice and easy goes all the way to the bottom when the choke is fully hot and closes and it sets on a seal down in here now the next thing is we're going to put together is this works nice and good the trick to this is this side here right there has to sit in the mouth of this pin that we just put in and this side here right there has to sit in the mouth of the first pin that we put in with the big spring on it so that way they work together, you know, opening and closing it. So we're going to push that down in there gently. Shouldn't be anything in the way. All right. Okay, now let's put our nut on the back. And the trick to this is you got to make sure that this nut is nice and snug. So, it is a 5 16 nut right back here. I'm going to get my handy dandy pliers. Like. Hold it. Chingo. We have to get another pair of pliers. That's the one I have. Might be a little bit too big. I used channel locks while I go get this off, but I have my channel locks holding my light up. Handed. This may work better in this direction. There we go. All right. Now that we 
of bouncing around a little bit. But as you can see, everything works really good. Hopefully you can see that. Let me put my headlamp on. Flash my light inside there. As you can see, everything works nice and smooth. The spring and the shaft that goes down and blocks it off. And it goes all the way in. Okay? Alright. The next thing we want to do is our plastic piece, which is very brittle, very soft, delicate. This sits right here. See the mouth like a foot, like a smiley face. So you line up the thread holes and you put that right there. Okay? So when we put our, this is a broken one, but when we put our spring back on here, you're going to line up this spring with that piece there and put it on. Boom. Then you're going to put these three nuts, these screws in. Tighten it down, not too tight. And then we're going to mount it to the carburetor. Which takes these three screws right here. It's two longer ones and one shorter one. Boom. Like I said, that mounts right here on the carburetor. But the carburetor I got is on the car, so I'm just using this as an example. And I did take the heat mass off of the other one. And I managed to get this nut off. It's extremely difficult. But what I did is I boiled this whole thing until I watched the spring how far it's going to go. Okay? As it heats and goes that way and that way, then I marked it. And that's where I set my my thing to. Just like John Twist says on his video. It does work, by the way. Um, so I'll get this all put back together and put it on the car and hopefully it uh, leans out my engine. Thanks.